Hey now, welcome to the Race Crews Weekend Show. Thanks for popping in. Well, something a little different. Yeah, I don't have a hat on. I'm not wearing a hat. I moved my desk when it was over there. What happens is I was right underneath the light, but now the light's over there. Well, if you know if you know pool, if you know like a cue ball and you hit the cue ball on an angle because you want the ball to go that way. So if you look at my cue ball, you can tell that the angle of the light is uh, right there. But anyways, I got a couple of other lights on the side as well. I'm recording this uh, 7.45 Sunday night. And if I would have done it earlier, the room would have been uh, better lit from uh, the light right there. When my desk was there, not only was I straight under the light, but there's a window in the back and I have it blocked off so that people can't see. And it's not really attractive. It was just all black. I never got around to changing the color. Oh, something's different. You were talking about that. Why didn't you say so? I thought you were talking about my hat. Yeah, finally, I'm getting all cooped up in the corner over there. Not only that, I cooped up in the corner facing a wall. Plus, it was ugly in the back. Just had the black background right there. Uh, I want to get some cars put out. So I picked up a couple uh, display cases. And I, I needed some with adjustable shelves so I could put some larger items and whatnot. Uh, Hot Wheels GoPro. Yeah, Mattel sent me a GoPro. Uh, well, they sent me the GoPro and the new Hot Wheels Zoom In. The only thing about my camera, I used to be able to reach it right here. Because it was just behind the monitor. Now I can't reach it. I got another. I got another. I got so far to go. Anyways, uh, there's the uh, zoom in. Well, the zoom in is on the bottom and a GoPro is on the top. So Mattel sent me that so I can review it. Came in a nice display box. If you're on, if you're, if you're on Patreon and you support, if you're part of the reward level for behind the scenes, you got to see me unbox that. I got a box coming from Mattel Design Center. I didn't even know what it was. <laughs> so I just uh, unboxed it on camera and found out it was uh, that's what it was. So thanks to uh, the Patreon people who are on the reward level for behind the scenes. Ah, three dollars, three bucks a month. I give it a little. I give them a little something extra for for them uh, being part of Patreon. So, anyways, uh, that's nice. Uh, how about I go ahead and show you? Uh, I did some test footage with this. I want to shoot more. But before I did a lot of shooting, I had to see what it looked like, right? So this is just raw footage. And I'm going to be, you're going to hear me talking. I'm talking to myself, you know, while, while the car's doing whatever it's doing. I don't even remember what I said. But let me go ahead and give you a little preview of some, some of my pre-testing, okay? It's at uh, 1080 wide. 3 hours and 45 minutes, 41, 30 frames per second. This is just off the uh, lower. Now we'll drop it from the top. Drop it from the top. No lights. No lights. Wipe out. Second chance. More speed. It's not doing well in the loop. Why is it not doing well in the loop? Let's just move my uh, drop higher up. We are really high now. Second fail. Mucho failo. The device is starting to warm up. out. Let me turn on lights. Wipe out. Let's go ahead and take off a uh, track so we can just send it through the uh, curve. Uh, GoPro. 
No. No loop. I'm gonna lower it. I don't need to be going full speed through this thing. I'm one track to length down. One car length behind one piece of track. It's landing too hard. I'm angling the track. I'm pushing down on the track so that it has a straight drop. So zoom in, it's pretty cool. It works with the GoPro Sessions. I forget which one. I think this is number five. Hero 5 Session. I keep saying Sessions. Hero 5 Session, that's the GoPro it works with because it's a cube. And I'll be showing, uh, when I do my official video, I'll show my old GoPro compare sizes, show why it's intended for this. Uh, some things you notice, and this this is why I've, I don't, I hope you don't mind me sharing raw footage because you're going to learn some things from it, right? What do we learn? Uh, it's kind of kind of noisy when it's going down the track. It's a, what is that noise? I don't know. I don't know if it's the track. Is the track bumpy? Or is it the wheels? I didn't shoot any video of it on the table. I have to do that and see if it's... That'll let me know if it's the track or the wheels. Yeah, it kind of has that noise. So you definitely want to use track. Now, maybe if you're outside, you know, like uh, Five Mad Movie Makers, I think. He does a lot of videos with a GoPro on a Hot Wheel going through the backyard doing this and doing that. One thing you don't see him doing is loops. <laughs> this thing, this thing's heavy. This thing's now he doesn't have this one. He mocked, he made his own custom base and he put a GoPro on it. So he doesn't have this one. Uh, not yet, as far as I know. But all the videos he's done with the older GoPro, older version, this thing's heavy. It's not it's hard to do loops. I mean, I have it at the top of my, uh, I have a uh, grab, uh, I forgot what I call it. Anyways, stand, track stand. I have a track stand where I hook on my clamp and I have it all the way at the top. And it's not enough speed to go through the loop. So I mean, it's not really good for loops. All right? well, well, not with the, uh, not with the GoPro. So my plan is, is now you guys got a, a I didn't share that behind the scenes video with uh, Patreon. They got to see the unboxing, and a lot of them they watch the weekend show anyway. So now they're going to see that as well. Now the the car itself, Zoom In is the name of the car. Hey, they have it listed as a track star, I think, on the package or something to that effect. So this is what my plan is. I'll have one video for race grooves, and I'll be doing something nice for race grooves. And then when it comes to boosters, loops, and curves and stuff like that. I'll have another video over on my track time channel, all right? Uh, well, you know what? Uh, I'm going to take a break, and then let's go ahead and talk about some of the stuff behind me, okay? Thanks for sticking around. Now, if you're a long-time YouTuber, I mean, if you've been on YouTube for a long time, or maybe you've gone through my older catalog, you're going to recognize Wolf Mountain right there. Yeah, I've done a review on that one. It was one of my uh, very first successful videos on YouTube, and uh, I'll talk about that later. Here we have some Hot Wheels display cases. These were at uh, Target. It's called uh, Collector Showcase. That's pretty cool. Of course, there's the GoPro box right there. Target also has Sizzler's Power Pit. Sizzler's, that's a Hot Wheels car where you can charge them up and they zoom around the track. Mainly fat track, uh, two lanes or three lanes wide. Speed Racer, when they released Speed Racer, they had two lane wide. And then but regular Sizzler fat track is three lanes wide. Talked about that. There look, my favorite Matchbox GT40. Here we have some Monster Jam. Of course, you have the wrestling WCW, I think it is. Except for Gravedigger's Hot Rod Association. Um, so I have all of those right there. Here's, here's an older Monster Jam multi-pack. All of these are small hubs. They don't work too good on the track. So I'll talk about that next week. And here, here we have a couple Jada Transformers. I showed these in the last weekend show. Next to them, these are old school. You got some uh, Jada Dub City. Got a couple samples of the uh, Chevy Avalanche. That was, I think that was a later run. Two-tone paint. Top one's black and silver. Bottom one is red and uh, black. Down here, Johnny Lightning Truck and Tuesday. I did a review on that. Majorette, I've reviewed those as well. Ghostbusters. I'll talk about this in a second. Two pack. I don't know if you can see this old uh, 90s car wash, Hot Wheels car wash. Can you see that with the chair? Um, at some point, I got to review that. I have Fast and Furious on the bottom. The Maestro I showed last week. Green light. 
you have the uh, Breaking Bread Camper, you have HD Trucks with the Golf logos, Fat Lease, VW Bus, and this is the first set of Gran Turismo Hot Wheels. Now there's already another batch, I showed those in the weekend show, and that was a little gift from somebody, maybe a special Lamborghini, put some uh, congratulations for having 300,000 subscribers, which was uh, not too long ago, and here I am, 600,000 subscribers, fantastic. Can't see it on top. I don't know if you can see the red barely on top. Geo tracks. When I was doing birthday parties for kids, I thought maybe I'd do a, a train track parties. Didn't quite, uh, you know, I thought about it. I bought extras of those to see if I can make it work. And for a birthday party environment, it just quite doesn't work. You might be able to figure out why. But see, some of the stuff I, I bought when uh, I was doing the birthday parties, I thought I'd do train parties. I thought I used the Sizzlers for my uh, birthday parties for kids. I did that for, I, that's one of the sets that I used for my birthday parties. That's a very cool set. Kids loved playing with that set. So anyways, I'll talk more about that uh, next week. Let's go ahead and get to some of the uh, questions from the last weekend show. And if you, if you use Ask Race Grooves on any of my videos, I search my comments, look for the Ask Race Grooves hashtags, and I pick most of them to talk about right here but first i forgot truck and tuesday i did have truck and tuesday had a new hot wheels uh, it's not trucking yeah trucking well no hot wheels super rigs very cool it's like it's like a piggy bank you got a little slot and then when you you should have watched should have been there gumball three collector dinero rapido jeje de donde conquiste conseguiste pesos mexicanos he was wondering where did i get the mexican pesos because it's a coin bank, so uh, they, they packaged it with fast cash. And fast cash it has a roof piece, and you can use it like a money clip. Well, uh, one of the neighbors here, I said, do you happen to have any uh, Mexican paper money? I need some, uh, do I want to use it for fast cash? And so they helped, they helped me out get, get those. I didn't, didn't even dawn on me about that until I was here getting ready to film the video. I'm thinking through how am I going to do this, this, this for the... Uh, Truck and Tuesday Bank uh, Money. I forgot the name of the set. Anyways, um, then it dawned on me, <laughs> right? Um, it's called Fast Cash. Why don't they call it uh, Rapido Dinero? And then uh, I thought, wow, why don't I use paper money for Mexican paper money? So I went and asked them. And then even after that, I, re I decided, wait a second. It's not, it would not be Rapido Dinero, Fast Cash. Because Spanish is different. They put... The main word first, and then the descriptive word afterwards. So it would be dinero rápido. So then I got that. <laughs> Anyways, um, and then I thought of a couple other funny things. And then I wanted to make sure to say it right. And then I think I still botched it. So I said, uh, uh, no, se llama, no se llama dinero rápido. It's not called fast cash. Or cash fast in English. And then I said, uh, ha, solo bromeo. I might have said bromeo. I forget. Anyways, ha, ha. Well, you got ha, ha. They just, print, they just spell it differently. Solo bromeo just means, ha, ha, I'm kidding. So it's just kind of something fun to do something a little bit different. I appreciate those of you who appreciated me putting that in there. Thank you, Gumball 3 Collector, and everybody else who appreciated me doing a little something for the uh, Spanish-speaking audience. Now, um, as far as the coins, <laughs> I, don't, I don't carry coins. I don't keep coins. I don't let them pile up. This is not a purse. I don't care what my daughter says. This is not a purse. This is my little coin pouch. These are all the coins I have in the world right here. I get my coins going here. And then if I'm paying for my cars going through Target, go to the uh, self-pay at the end, get rid of some coins, right? So I don't have very many coins. So I had to ask my wife, hey, uh, can I borrow some of your coins? So she has bags of coins like, uh, <laughs> like they're going to go out of style or something. I'm just saying. So I told her, I think I sent her an email and I, <laughs> I said, thanks for... <laughs> Thanks for loaning me the coins. I'm done. T take a look at the uh, thumbnail image. And then that's when she sent me a message back. You even took my piggy bank, you rat. 
Yeah, it was a perfect size. How can I not use her picking bake? It was a perfect size to do it in the video. So I got a, a light scolding. I returned it in perfectly good condition. Besides, I returned it in better condition. It was all dusty and I dusted it all off, polished it up. So it looked good in the video. Because you know when you got it right in front of the camera, you're going to see every little flaw. Biker Joe 18 asked Gray Screws updated my spreadsheet today. So far, over 30 blue cards with no number. Do you think our frustration with that will trigger a change at Mattel? No. Won't trigger a change at all. And what he's talking about is up here on the corner, we get a little collector number, right? It'll say, what number out of 250? Whatever the number is for this year. Well, will see like basic treasure hunts. Up here in the corner for treasure hunts and basic treasure hunts, there's no number, right? But there's also... There's also these other cars that don't have a number, and they're supposed to be some kind of a uh, chase. There's more of those cars, in those colors, than the regular. I don't want to go over it all over again. Joe, I, I share your frustration with these non-numbers. What they do is, like, if there's a, a store exclusive, it's not really part of the collector set for the year because you have to be in a country to be able to get those colors. So I guess they leave the number off so that... People in non-USA countries, outside the USA, um, they don't feel like they have to have it and they're missing a collector number. So if they don't put the collector number on there, then somebody realizes, I'm not missing any. I have all the numbers. That's okay. Well, so if they're missing treasure on some basic treasure on those are kind of chase pieces, right? So that's okay. But then when they release these three cars, four cars, I forget. I don't care. <laughs> With, without number. <laughs> Too much. I'm with you, Joe. Is, is it going to trigger a change at Mattel? Nope. They sell every car eventually. Blue GT, as a Hot Wheels fan, how does it feel like buying lots of cars just to show in the video? And in the last weekend show, I showed that, I showed that, I showed that. And I did not buy those cars just to show in the video. Those were cars that I would like to own. Uh, I also showed these patriotic cars. I'll show these in a second. But if you watched last week and show, you've seen them all. I bought those because I want them in my collection or I want to use them in a video. I don't buy things just to show in the weekend show. I can't afford it. Three, four years ago, I could afford it. Now, let me tell you, I can't afford it. DJM Eugene3172 Ask Ray Screws. Hey, Mark, did you try sometimes some motorcycles from downhill racetracks if it works? Okay, well, I did do a downhill racing video over there on the Track Time channel. I did a Track Time shout-outs video with, and I used a Honda Monkey Z50. And it actually stayed upright and made it all the way to the finish line trigger. It didn't win, of course. Anyways, I absolutely plan on doing some Hot Wheels motorcycles downhill videos, racing videos. Here you have the Moto. These were called Moto, M-O-T-O. I have a whole bunch of these. And then before that, they had these motorcycles right here. Mm, Hero cycles. No, Thunder cycles. They were called Thunder cycles. But then they do, did some with Superman and a couple of heroes. So they called those Hero cycles. I have a whole bunch of those waiting to be shown in a downhill racing video as well. Donald Smith, love your videos. Very cool. Where's your accent from? Don't know. Born and raised in Southern California. I have no idea where I got my accent. My mom was born in Southern California. My my blood father died when I was two and a half, so I don't even know what he sounded like. But he was Dutch, 100% Dutch from the Netherlands, and so I don't know what his accent was. And my adopted father, he's pure blood Russian. So couldn't tell you where I got my accent from. Some of it kind of rubs off because I'm in a highly Latino neighborhood, so I'm sure some of it comes from there as well. But I've also had people say, you sound like from Australia, Europe, Canada. Just born and raised in Southern California. Kevin Pangaribuan, Ask Ray Screws, open the 50th Red Lines and the Project Cars 2 lineup. Eventually, I'll be showing those as well, probably in a downhill racing video. I'll be doing those. Mika XD, I always like the race screws. We can show Ask Ray Screws. Me and my brother have over 600 cars and we haven't found a super treasure hunt. So are we unlucky or do they have bad stores in Denmark and Germany? That's where I buy Hot Wheels. Well, I can't speak for every country around the world. I don't know. I'm here in California, right? But 
They do put super treasure hunts in the international mixes as well. You might get them on the short cards, right? They're half the size. And as far as I'm told, they're in those cases as well. But sometimes they go through a, uh, a middle company. And then maybe not all the cars make it actually to the store. I don't know. I don't know. Jay Gilbert. I forgot that the Lamborghini was the quote-unquote normal vehicle in the Dark Knight Rises film. Nice that Mattel put that into consideration and put it in the set. Yeah, pretty cool to get a Lamborghini in the Batman set for 2018. Derpy in noob, derpy noob. Dude, I went to the car show in BC in Stevenson. And for $3, I found a Diora 2. He's talking about the Acceleration Highway 35 version of Diora 2. The kids didn't know how rare they were. Congratulations on getting yourself a, a Diora 2 at a price you are happy to pay. Jedrick Chung, I just found Hot Wheels City Shark Beach Battle. It's so big. It is bigger than Cobra Crush, but it is not the biggest Hot Wheels City set. Yeah, I've seen it. It's, it's pretty big. But, uh, and it's, I think, uh, the $40. But it's in Canada. It's not in the USA yet. People keep posting the comments saying, Hey, it's up there. I know it's up there, but I'm down here. Maybe somebody in Canada can help me get that. It's at Walmart. Let me know. I tried to buy it from the Walmart website, and they won't ship to the USA. Oh, well. Someone can hook up a do, hook me up so I can do a review. I'll pay you for it, and then I can do the review. Until then, I have I can't I have no access to it. Andy Valdez, not my friend Andy Valdez. I don't think so. How do thou know if it's a retro? Would it say on the package? And the retro, I had a, oh, here it is. Got upside down. Retro, my friend Andy Valdez. Not my friend, my friend, but amigo. Anyways, this kind of package, this, this is what is called retro. When they first came out, they were called like retro entertainment. And so when people talk about retro, they're talking about this style of package and, and the and the blisters kind of round this right there. And they, and they often have like, especially if it's a movie, it looks like a film on the bottom, a movie strip. So so this is a retro. Collectors call it retro because that's what we learned it in the beginning. Mattel says, we never called it retro. We don't know how you guys called it retro. I don't know where it came from. All I know is that's what everybody calls it. So if I call it retro, people know what I'm talking about. Doesn't It's never said it on the packaging, ever. As a matter of fact, so you have the Ghostbusters, and I was going to talk about this other one. There was a uh, two-pack. Where'd you go? Two-pack Ghostbusters, side by side, right? And I think you can see that. Hopefully I don't scrape the wall. Uh-oh. Anyways, that's not called a retro. Even though it's very, very similar in how it's presented, the singles are the retro, okay? Thank you, Andy. Here we have Rivera's Hot Wheels. Good to see you, Mark. Glad I was able to help you complete your red, white, and blue set. What? I never put it two and two together. <laughs> he, he watches my videos, and I watch his videos. But a lot of the times, you know, uh, he's not necessarily on camera that often. He is from time to time, on, right? He is from time to time. He'll show himself, or he'll be. It just then dawned on me. I think he might have had a hat on that day. I didn't even recognize who it was. <laughs> Thanks, Rivera. Thank you for helping me uh, get the last. You know what he did? Is that uh, I got most, most of the cars were there, but a couple of them were missing. And he said, yeah, you know, they just, they just came, they just came out. He goes, you know, some people, they just bought a couple of the cars and they left. I said, well, that's the way it goes. I'll be around. I keep trying to get them. And then next thing you know, a fella's walking down the aisle. <laughs> he turns to me, he goes, hey, can you let him have one of those cars? And so the guy said, okay. He, he had three of the 67 Chevy C10. So the fellow let me get one. Thank you very much. And then I wound up finding them uh, like uh, the next morning. I wound up finding uh, more. So thanks for helping me c c finish my set for the night. That was very cool. And thanks to the fellow who passed one on. I appreciate it very much. And then uh, I got some more in the morning. So now I can keep some on the package and have some loose for racing. Cracked egg, square bodies. Yeah, cracked egg. Square bodies are the third generation C10s. The 67 is a second generation. They ran from 1967 to 1972. Mm, I daily drive my 67, and they've always been relatively popular trucks. Because to me, it seems like it's kind of a newer thing. It's like all of a sudden it's become popular. 
but I'm not part of the automotive industry, so I don't. I didn't know if it's that been popular all along. Thank you very much, and it's pretty interesting. I showed these last year. Last year, Stars and Stripes. This year, Stars and Stripes. Uh, both years got a uh, C10. So for you collectors, congratulations. And thanks for letting me know that it's not all Chevy C10s. It's the uh, third generation C10s, which must mean it's after 73, if I'm doing the math. Here we have one more, no, two more. Emmanuel Guzman, do a matchbox downhill racing competition with those five packs. It doesn't have to be shout outs though. It's exactly what I'm going to be doing with five packs. And I'll be doing downhill racing with the five packs. Hot Wheels, Matchbox, Maystow even has multi packs as well. I'll be doing a lot more downhill racing on Race Grooves. That's the name, isn't it? Now, V8 asked, Hi, Mark. Awesome video as usual. Thank you. Just a question. Here in SA, we have the 50th anniversary cars too. They're on a black card, and all of the cars are finished in matte black with the 50th details decals in blue and gold. Do you also have them in the States? It's a collection of six, if I'm not mistaken. Thanks again. And if I recall correctly, SA is South Africa, I believe where he's from. We have the black and gold 50th anniversary as well. I've been seeing them popping up. I haven't bought any yet. I'm going to buy them for sure. I'm just waiting. And uh, they're mass produced. They're not going to be rare. Except for that gold 67 Camaro. That would be very nice to have. And... But I'll get them. I just don't have them yet. They're in multiple stores and they sell out quickly. I have a car sitting here. The 8 crate. And I had a comment from somebody letting me know about the 8 crate. It was actually a Ford. I misspoke and thought it was a Nomad. And I'm looking for my questions. Here we go. Phantom, the 8 crate is a customized 1956 Ford Ranch Wagon. Thank you very much, 8 crate. Very cool. It's kind of like a wagon right there. Uh, several people helped out with that. And as a matter of fact, several people commented the same things that I just shared. And I just kind of picked somebody to uh, give a shout out in the video, right? Thanks for those of you who you didn't get picked. But I appreciate you commenting and interacting with people and helping out other collectors. I can't do it all. Sometimes if you have questions, it's also good. The Race Grooves community on Facebook. Lots of helpful collectors there. Anyways... I'm glad to have display cases. I might have to work on my lighting a little bit. Maybe maybe it's good. Maybe you don't want to see so much. I'm just saying. I understand. But anyways, thanks for watching another Race Cruise Weekend show. Have a good week. Bye-bye.